What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Coffee and Van Chats. I'm sitting here with Peter Stetna, who is a returning guest, man. Thanks. Thanks for coming back on. I appreciate it. I obviously didn't scare you away the first time, huh? Yeah, man. I mean, when did we, we chatted in like the highs know. or the lows of pandemic? So lots, yeah, a lot has so. happened. The world's moving again, man. Yeah, yeah. The world's yeah. A, the world's a thing again. I mean, they have UCI gravel worlds now. Um, <laughs> which i'm have, not at but yeah yeah and they, yeah we're, we're gonna dive into that i'm curious i, I want to hear your feedback on that and um and yeah it's just it's been it's been crazy but anyways uh you know what what have you been up to man how's your season going <laughs> like how's how's the gravel life how's the van life because you've i think when i brought you on you had just gotten the van like you yeah had, like actually that's it you had just driven it across mm -hmm. just got in the van mm -hmm. do you like the van do you like the van life I, I love it, man. I'm yeah. I'm fully sold. Uh, it makes the most sense for this solo privateering, whatever you call it, gravel thing I do. Uh, yeah. you, just have to, you have to go around with so much crap and, and gear and you're in these towns that a lot of them don't have a hotel and, and, you know, housing space. So being in the van is, is liberating. Um, full, fully drank the Kool-Aid on that one. Um, and, since we talked that van I had, I mean, I loved it and it got me in the door. Um, and it was a DIY build I loved, but, uh, it was, it was up there in age and it, it yeah. had some issues. So <laughs> it was, it was a little precarious getting to some races last year, but it allowed me to do my job well enough and showcase this gravel thing that I actually landed a van sponsor. So now I'm in a fancy van, which is, uh, that's, that's, that's cool. made life a little better. <laughs> that's cool. Isn't it crazy though? Like when you get a van, you like, you get so excited and you think you know what you want. And then the moment you get it, you're like, man, if I could go back in time, I would change this. I would change that. Yep. It's like yep. van builds. You're and I bet even <clears throat> in your fancy van and you probably can't say this because you're sponsored by this company, but there's always just one thing. Oh, I know. I you mean, add one thing. There's just one thing. They're chill. And I've even told them, but I would change the way that like this and that are aligned and, and the layout for me. And, uh, Cause it is like when you, when you start looking at the companies that are like a modern, you know, like a, a, a it's kind of like a one size fits all type of build. Yeah. It's never going to fit everyone. And you can customize them all to a point. Um, like they helped me dial in this rad, uh, bike tray slide gear storage garage thing. But, um, you know, there's things I would change for myself and, and that's fine. But, um, it is, uh, it, it makes life living on the road a lot easier and it is it is a pretty dreamy setup so yeah and so um speaking of that and just travel and i know you're a beer guy what's what's the beer of choice right now like what is Ooh. what is what what's what, what what are you hanging on to i know if lambie's hanging around you you're just you're all over a pumpkin beer but oh, what's God. what's your beer <laughs> pumpkin and that guy uh <laughs> pumpkin head ashton um yeah 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 it's the only beer i can get him to drink and he got like a custom beer with some partnership and it's not a pumpkin it's like an ipa and he doesn't even drink ipas and so i was i was busting his balls but uh which is really I, funny because i think it's in i think it's in europe i think is that, it okay yeah i think it's me <laughs> i he can correct me if i'm wrong but i honestly because it was him and james arnold which is that guy's based right out of the UK, right the, guy the that artist the cartoons and stuff um yeah i think i'm pretty sure it's out of the uk so he has to get it shipped to him <laughs> <laughs> i mean i saw the picture in the pint glass and it looked nice and juicy and hazy and looked like you were yeah. gonna drink a loaf of bread which is what he's trying to do with all his his trainers whiffed workouts anyway so yeah um. <laughs> yeah uh, yeah uh my personal right now there's this brewery out of out of uh oakland on the other side of san francisco uh called ghost town kind of like this dark like skeletal theme but uh anything they touch especially ipa focused is just like gold standard so if you're in Great. if you're in norcal look for ghost town right now uh can't go wrong with those guys sweet i'm hoping to head that way over thanksgiving so that would do it that that'll be cool. I'll check out Ghost Town. So, anyways, let's let's dive into to the season a little bit because mm. it's been a wild one, man. I mean, like yeah. ups and downs with you know there was some controversy which we won't like really really dive into. 
um, <laughs> because that seems all settled and that's all over talked and whatever else. But Unbound, I want to go mm. to Unbound. Okay. Unbound was an interesting one for me this year, just watching it on the on the sidelines. What was your initial thoughts? I mean, because is that your first wet Unbound? Yes, it was my first wet Unbound. Yep. Because the last wet unbound was uh Yuri one, right? Wasn't that like 10 years yeah. ago or something? Yeah. Like that? Which is kind of crazy to think about. And so I honestly think the start list probably had some of the heaviest hitters to date, mm -hmm. as it always as every year it just gets better and better and better. Yeah. So what was your initial plan going into that race and like how did that kind of play out for you? And you know, is there something you would change or do differently? I mean, my unbound, I would change a million things. That was a, a poor, poor showing on my part. But, um, you know, I think it's the, this whole the season as a whole is. Gravel has shifted and changed and um, and, you know, the controversy you allude to and we can get into it later is, you know, I've. Kind of like held on to what I feel I know makes it special coming from the road, right? And coming from that elite, pure performance, uh, win at all cost mentality, and knowing why gravels exploded as being a, a greater rejection of that by the masses. And now you see it swinging back the other way. And for better or worse, sometimes both, uh, I've been defensive of that because I yeah. know that. And I've, I've staked my career on understanding this, right? And and um, so, so that you know, if you take that as a kind of a preface of how this whole season has looked and started to evolve, um, you know, Unbound is the pinnacle of that. And um, gosh, you know, I just I didn't enjoy it this year. Yeah. Uh, I, I have to say that bluntly, it was it felt like a world tour race, right? Which is the big show, right? And for for performance and hype and media. And that's that's what I do. That's what my competitors do. Like that is our biggest gravel race of the year. Um, but it just it was the ask was was so much. And, you know, I have I think a little bit of it was personal, right? Just like saying yes to too many media commitments in the, yeah. the days and weeks leading up to it, but also just in in the race. Right. It just became. About about the result it just it felt like a world tour race uh it didn't feel like the the gravel racing that i've i've loved and and i still want to do well and enjoy unbound because it is the big show you know i yeah. i mean i i came in with the intent of going for the win um and things just didn't shake out that way for me um but uh that's that's also I, bike racing. <laughs> I got kind of a hard question for you, and I hope it comes across well before we like dive into. And I think this is going to kind of sort of slide into the controversy a little bit, but more or less like mm. when we had you on the podcast last, one thing that like really interested me about you is like when you came into the gravel scene, there was like a there was a select few that had retired and made it very clear, hey, I'm retired. Mm -hmm. And then you made it very clear, like, hey, I'm retired from world tour racing, but I'm not retired from racing. Like, yes, you're like, I'm 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 training to win. Like, I want to win. Yeah. And so and I think I kind of know the answer to this, but I kind of want to put it on the podcast because I do think it comes up where it's like, well, why is he upset about X, Y and Z when he's trying to race his bike? Right. Like, yeah, it's a bike race. Yeah. And then he you know, if it doesn't go his way, he's talking about how you know, well, this wasn't done in the spirit of gravel. And so can you like kind of highlight, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And so it's I kind do. of an, and so it's kind of, it's just, I, I want you to have an opportunity to like clearly defend yourself on that front and, yeah. and kind of put that out there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's something I've internally battled with is, you know, I came to this realizing that these races are, legitimate events in their own right. They shouldn't be quote unquote alternative. Um, and I wanted to give them my focus. Um, and I came into it with a professional attitude and it helped boost my career. And I feel responsible, good and bad for almost creating a class of, of gravel pro now, right? You can get rid of the 
you don't have to go to Europe on the road to make a living racing a bike, right? Like there's this other alternative now. Um, but part of me, I guess my, my angle was always like, it doesn't come at the expense of the community and having fun. Like mm. that was, that was what drew me to gravel, right? Was this massive after party, the, the camaraderie in the race. Um, and, you know, so I kind of I, I kind of put myself there as like, I'm not going to race at the expense of only thinking about the result. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that that's kind of where I, I always kind of drew my line because I live that that performance only world. And um, I do, I guess, feel a little bit responsible now that maybe others have seen my success in in having a profession here and others have gone on to do it um and some are doing really really well at it um and everyone has their own angle but um i i hope it doesn't come across that i'm just bitching when i don't win mm -hmm. it's i i felt defensive of the way it was being raced because it started to just feel like win no matter what you had athletes only caring about the result just sitting in their hotel room with their norma tech boots instead of hanging out with the gravel masses right and all this other stuff um and and yeah i think i might have started to come across as a grouchy old man there and i have to i had to consciously check myself that i can't be a gatekeeper and i do feel I don't think gravel's ruined, but I do, you know, I, I feel like, cause that's always mocked in the memes, but I do feel like, uh, a little bit guilty that it's, it's kind of gone more performance oriented than it was before I came. Well, that's a, um, that's an interest. Yeah. Like that's an interesting perspective because, you know, I think I came in just to like race to race, yeah. um, mid South and, you know, when I saw mid south and like, I think you guys had, it was that rainy year, the like oh, gosh. COVID, yep. COVID came to play. Yeah. Um, and it was, that was unheard of. Um, but that to me was the first time I witnessed gravel and I witnessed what exactly what you're explaining. But if I'm being honest, that same, what was it a year later when I went to unbound, I'm witnessing the gravel that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So when I like the, the, the thing that you like, you feel like it's going towards this performance and, and honestly, it's really funny. It's like, it's almost like a Jack of all trades, man. Like they're mm -hmm. trying to, they're trying to talk to influencers while the influencers are also trying to recover. And like, they're doing podcasts out of the back of trucks going down roads while they also need to get their openers in. Like I heard, you know, I know people yeah. are getting openers in before these, right? And it's, it's insane. And yeah. so that being said, do you, with lifetime and I don't, and, and we can kind of dive away from this depending on, you know, how you feel like this question might be worded, but um, do you feel like lifetime's ruining gravel in a way? Does that make sense? Like no, $25,000, yeah, like it it's, like, it's a lot of money. Um, it because of that it became infinitely more serious and and i'll preface this with my the folks running the lifetime show are my friends and they yeah, yeah. want to promote professional north american racing which is what i'm doing so i yeah. mean it's i i respect and like their effort um i support the series but i have also been extremely clear that that should not be the only series in town. I want the attention to be to your mid Souths, your steamboats, your Oregon trails, your Belgian waffle series, right? Like, and you know, they've done a good job at owning the conversation. And I, a lot of pros have based their entire season off that and that exclusively, which is something I, I am not a personal fan of. I've purposely yeah. done other stuff and and focused on other stuff as well um and you know they've they've brought media international media attention to it mm -hmm. um they've highlighted their races i mean it's by all intents and purposes for the global expansion of gravel and 
for their brand, they're doing great. Um, I think there were riders who weren't going to do anything with it, with gravel, and they're only coming because of that that indeed. series, right? Um, but I mean, at the same time, like, gosh, I I mean, they're good people there. I think mean, the folks running that and and Big Sugar and Leadville, I mean we were going to do all those races anyway. And they're, they're good friends. And I would rather them be owning the the big series than, than the UCI. Right. Like for sure. And I, <laughs> yeah, and I don't, I don't want to take away from lifetime because I, you know, I have a lot of, I just, I, I, yeah, I, well. I guess I wanted to be clear that I want yeah. people to still remember all the other races that are so cool and special. Um, that's, that's, that's a cool, that's cool feedback because it's not like, it's not, well, one, you can't, you can't have every race, right? Like you exactly. can't, like lifetime can't just be like buy up every race because then it won't look good any like that won't look good either, mm -hmm. right? And so um yeah, it just yeah, it's not like when you're a crit racer, you're only doing USA crits or whatever yeah. it was at the time or you know, what have you. And so yeah, no, I was just curious like what your thoughts are on this whole lifetime GP thing because <laughs> well, I'm kind of Sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. Where you're where you're sitting. No, at. where I'm where I'm kind of interested in where I'm sitting at. It's like I didn't apply for it or anything. Okay. And and I bet there was other people who didn't apply for it kind of for the same reason. I didn't want to apply for it. And in the off chance, like I pulled some heartstrings with the way I wrote my story of like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I used to be 300 pounds and track racer. Mm -hmm. And now I want to race gravel. And like I tried to pitch the angle of the story because that's what I did for lead boat. And that's because mm -hmm. I was like, I'm there's no way I'm gonna get into leadville because i don't even own a mountain bike and i put that mm -hmm. in my in my application right and so when i was doing that and thinking about it i was like i don't know what i'm going to be doing next year so the last thing i want to do is miss so many races where i'm out of the series and i take somebody's spot and and we've already seen that happen where people are out of contention mm -hmm. and they've dropped out of the series and kind of left some guys hanging who maybe didn't have the greatest story and didn't get selected or yeah you know, like and so what's your kind of thought on that? Like, do you, do you well, think? Yeah, I think you need to see it as I, I always, no one thinks it's a perfect, perfect equation on year one. I think yeah. you're going to see changes next year. I think they're learning from benefits and mistakes, right? They're going to, mm -hmm. they're going to fix it if they go for, I think they're going to do it again from the rumors I'm hearing, but, um, yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. I mean, you the, when your focus is not necessarily gravel for the masses, but a series for the highest, you know, the the top tier echelon of North American racing, right? That was their goal. Yeah. Then every other sport you look at, like there is a barrier to entry, right? There's for sure. You want to go to the Tour de France, you got to get on a team. You want to race Formula One, you got to like make it into a Formula One team or whatever, whatever sport it is, right? So to complain about a barrier to entry for an elite series with a massive prize purse, I don't. I mean, I think that's a very normal thing to to be able to to have and justify because it creates a storyline, and the, those that missed out had chances all year to prove themselves because they can show up at the same races and do well and then get in next year. Right. Like, I mean, I can't tell, I mean, the amount of times I tried to get on the tour de France squad in a 10 year world tour career and I only made it twice. Like, I mean, yeah, yeah. like rejection sucks, but it happens. Um, you know, is it, you know, that is kind of the special thing about gravel is it is this mass thing where you don't need a category one license. You can just show up. And if you're talented, like throw haymakers against your Keegan's and Payson's and all of a sudden you're like, damn, this guy's, you know, you can make a career that way. So it's, it is a weird, unique spot. Um, yeah, gosh, there's, there's no right answer, but I, I know, sure, I, I know it, I'm throwing kind of some hard questions and I, and you're being really cool about philosophical. answering. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, and as far as the whole series, like I almost feel like it's become the mountain bike series and Belgian waffle ride is the gravel series. Oh, okay. because I feel like a lot of like the the pure like Brennan isn't even trying for the lifetime, right? I think guys like John and and maybe even 
maybe even Adam. I haven't talked to him about it, Adam Roberts, but like they're, yeah. you know, the, the mountain bike, super climby stuff isn't quite going their way. And it's like these gravel races. I feel like the Belgian waffle rides are gravel races and, and the, the way the lifetimes are, even though there's, they're my, they're light on the technical side of mountain biking, the way that they're all kind of falling together seems like a more of a mountain bike thing. So I'm almost viewing them as different <laughs> at hey, this point. Pause one second. I have a roommate who's locked down. So I'm going to go let him in. Give me one second. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you were saying you were saying that you feel like you feel like it's more of a mountain bike race. But it's in, but what's interesting, though, is that some people actually think BWR is actually like an over glorified road race. Like it's just with, <laughs> in some sections, <laughs> some of them. Are, California is. Uh, yeah, yeah, I haven't. Yeah. And then that, so and I'm saying this aloud and, and you know, we've mm -hmm. had we've had the race promoter um, on here before and and this was before this is when he released the triple crown or whatever. And so right. I haven't seen, I think I've seen a little bit of the Asheville one, but mm -hmm. I haven't seen the like Kansas or anything else. And so Utah is um, rugged. Utah is close to yeah. a mountain bike race. Um, okay. so they're, they're everything and everywhere. And yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I guess, I guess that being said, like kind of segueing out of the series and, you know, we got your thoughts, which again, thanks for answering those. Cause it's like, well, I guess I'm, I'd like to just leave it at this is like, you know, it has been a weird year and, mm -hmm. you know, last year was very good to me. Everything just clicked. And this year, a lot of life hiccups happened and it's been a trying year. And and with the and, and part of that is attributed to the changing tide of gravel. And I personally, again, had to get introspective and realize that I can't be a gatekeeper, but I still need to, for my personal health, I need to find and remember what's fun and what drew me to gravel. Because if I just wanted to solely chase results and series points, even though I am doing a few of these series, then I should have stayed on the road. So, you know, I've had to step back and realize and find my way and follow my heart, which I know sounds kind of corny, but that's what brought me to this in the first place. And so that's why going forward next year. Yeah, like I will still race your big unbounds and stuff. And, you know, I'll probably still do the series, but it's not going to be all these quote unquote a list races like, you know, the, the heart of gravel is in those grassroots events, those really fun, unique one off. So, you know, I really think it's going to be more of a a 50 50 split in you know your big ones and your unbounds and you're going to show up and you're like all right it's business time like this is a bike race but then the other half of my schedule is going to be i want to find those cool one-offs in <laughs> west virginia and tennessee and wherever that have not been on that aren't getting all the media because those are the really fun ones i think yeah and, and well, it, well it's cool that you say these kinds of things because you know now you know now that like we're coming off of that like what i just thought about was like it's it you're it's like you were a generation of gravel yeah and now there's this new generation of gravel yep and and we just talked about yuri that was a generation of gravel and so like yeah what's funny is like when you guys were coming in those guys actually weren't like getting well some probably were and they probably didn't have a big enough platform to voice frustration yeah. but like it would yeah. be really interesting to hear like a dan hughes you yeah. know what i mean and like like the, some of those guys who 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 won um yeah unbound back in the day when unbound was unbound and it was almost like totally you know going for the fences you know and there was no video cameras and live stream and frankie and trey you on a stage right. you know it's like it's insane man or dutch people flying in and just you know beach world champion i don't know like it's yeah. just crazy yeah yeah it's always going to be changing and you know yeah like yuri hoswald's a very close friend we talk regularly um yeah and yeah it's it's i don't think for those guys and and even for myself like it's not about someone 
doing it faster. Like it's not about winning the race, but it was a little bit about, you know, protecting what I believe makes it special. But yeah, I think you can just act in and find your way within it still because, you know, really it is just that very front pack where this is happening. And so all these controversies that social media blows out of proportion really are just this tiny sliver and most people don't give a damn about it so yeah. you know and and social media is probably the biggest part to blame is that you know it's it's hip to be offended and it's hip to start controversy because it gets more attention these days and i think that's you know that's politics right that's that's current events that's that's not cycling that's uh that's the world we live in right now well and i even have to catch myself on it right like i'm in media so it's right. like, you know, when, when I see you post a status, I'm just like, yo, you want to do a podcast? <laughs> and yeah. You're like, bro, I don't want to talk about this right now. No, no, yeah. no, no. Let's do a podcast. Come on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's literally, it's, it's for, it's for clicks and then they're fucking writing articles about it and mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. And, uh, yeah, it is, it is, it is pretty toxic, but, uh, unfortunately it is part of the game and it uh, is, <laughs> and it blows things out of proportion too. And so That's then you the have, thing. Yeah, well, like you have the meme pages create things. Oh, the they, gravel memes. They are they, everywhere. They, they are strong, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so they, they create things and they change things. But uh, but anyway, so that all being said, now that we've had that conversation of just series, and it's it's really cool to hear um, your support on, on some of the smaller local ones. And, and you know, mm. everybody wants to be the next Unbound and everybody wants to have that next and everybody wants to be the next Pete Stena, you know, it's like oh, with, okay. with media, you know what I mean though? Like even, yeah. even or an Alice and Tetrick and you can go down the list, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ted Kings. And so they, they want to do these things and it's, it's, it's hard, man. And so like, you know, once you get your foot in the door, like having a Pete Stetna show up to a race, even gravel locos, I mean, there's this, I mean, I don't, I saw this past weekend in Colorado. Yeah. It's like, it's, it looked pretty deep. Um, and I know the so first one. Did... I wanted to be there, man. That looks so <laughs> yeah. fun. So, and so yeah. it, that looked like a cool race. Um, but UCI worlds. And so this somehow mm -hmm. got shuffled under speaking of media, it got shuffled under the woods, I guess, just because Keegan was going to road worlds and that was a better headline. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I looked at the fucking roster and I've never even heard of some of these people. Mm. And so like, did, was there, a, and you, cause you would probably know more than me and we've done, I've done selection podcasts where we've talked to with USA cycling and, you know, we've had athletes on who've had selection issues and, you know, we've had, we've mm -hmm. talked about selection, selection, selection. Uh, I've been through the selection process. I'm assuming you have just oh, being yeah. a professional road cyclist. So, yep. you know, you've, you've been there, done that. Um, was there a, a, like a discretionary petition? Was there a selection criteria? Was there like, or was, were people just getting phone calls and we're like, Hey, we're going to put a team together. You can pay your way and make it happen. Gosh, I don't know. And that's the problem is it was so last minute that I, I mean, yeah, I think you still had to apply unless you went to an actual gravel world qualifier, which of which there was like, two or three in the u.s and then there's like some in like the philippines and australia <laughs> what uh, were you know? they were they i like don't know actual... like there was there was a villain news story and one of them had like you know like 50 people sign up or something like huh. i don't like 50 total like the total race was 50 people in all categories so like basically if you did the race you qualified for gravel worlds um wow yeah, you know, and, and it was initially I heard it was supposed to actually be in the US, which is something I fully agreed on, regardless of my support of the UCI having a gravel world. It's like, this is where gravel's happening right now. It's the US. Like, this is kind of our thing. Mm -hmm. And it was going to be in the US. And then all of a sudden, everything went quiet. And then they're like, oh, yeah, Italy. And, uh... and you know, it's just, it's it's about a general respect I think like all these other events, they're opening their registrations over the winter. They're hyping it. They're announcing it. And a lot of us who make a living by doing this, like we, I have a stacked calendar. I am busy. I am budgeted out. I'm booked up. And all of a sudden in the late spring or midsummer, I think it was even after Unbound, they finally like announced something in a different part of the world. And they're like, yeah, this is a big deal. Like, 
uh-uh, uh, you know? And then you read about it and it is categories. The men race a different distance than, sorry, the women race a shorter distance than the men, which that's like a big no-no in gravel. And again, I guess I sound gatekeeper right? Because who am I to make the rules, no, right? Yeah, no, for like, sure. it, you know, but it's like, it doesn't look anything like, I think if the UCI wanted to like do a gravel worlds thing, right, just put on a badass race, a really fun one, and just give a rainbow jersey to the first men and women across the line and don't do anything else different. But now there's all yeah. these the categories and the qualifiers and this template. And it's, I just, I don't know of anyone who cares. And, and it's a flat race in, in Italy on, that doesn't even like, it sounds like you could almost ride a road bike on it. Like, wow. Um, it's yeah, it's, it's interesting. Cause it's like, it's almost like culture, I think is what you're trying is. to protect. And what and you... I, yes. And, and what I've come to deduce after talking with colleagues in Europe and in the U S and I mean, I think it's pretty obvious when you see a lot of us who make a living doing gravel, not being there, but, yeah. um, I think, what's happening is you have gravel as we generally know it in the US. And then I think the UCI is just they're going to own gravel in Europe, right? In the in in Europe, your racing license isn't questioned. There's not this massive distrust of the governing body like there is here in the US. So I think it's going to look totally different. It's and it's even like mountain bike back in the day. You know, you had your old school Norba series that were these big mountain circuits and more endurance event. And then, you know, now it's kind of like this glorified short track, like spicy, quick laps and all that. Um, I think the UCI, like, you're not, if you want to go race a bike in Belgium, you take out a license. Like, that's just what you do. And it's, it's on question. And so they're going to create gravel that fits their clientele and their template and, and makes sense and that people can understand. And it's going to feel and look totally different um, than here. And I, I mean, like, all I'm going to do is is vote with my registration. You know, like, yeah. if I, I, I'm not going to put a hard, no, I'm never going to do the Gravel World Championships, which initially I had that attitude. But you know what? Like, if they put together something that looks badass and rad and a fun day on the bike, yeah, I'll go. I'll try to, you know petition USA cycling or qualify or if it if it looks like a good time but if it looks like it does now like that same weekend I'm going to do a local race here in NorCal in Nevada City next to a Rad Radcraft brewery and yeah some close friends you know so it's just vote with your registration man well so and and this like kind of goes back to kind of what we chatted about it's just like you know when I I'm not gonna lie like when we first met like I was kind of like man he is gonna destroy gravel culture with the attitude of how much he wants to win and uh, in reality it's like actually he's he's like he's trying to go hey no 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 i'm not i'm not the culture i will stop for the chase i will take yeah. my photo at the chase with the lead yeah. group but i'm gonna get back on my bike and i'm gonna ride 30 miles an hour in a straight line with the boys like that's yeah. i'm gonna you know i'm gonna stop and i'm gonna get a popsicle at the feed zone yeah. and thank, thank the, thank the crew for being there. And then I'm going to yeah. go back. Out. And, and so it's interesting hearing you say all this too, because it's like, it's almost like you still want to race to win, but you don't want to have that at the expense of the culture that you yes. came in because, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but are you kind of doing that? Because you remember when all you guys came in, everybody was mm -hmm. saying, Oh, the retired guys are here to ruin gravel. Yeah. Are you trying to make sure that you don't become a part of that mold? Sorry, of which mold? Of the retired guy that ruined gravel? Yeah, yeah. Is that <laughs> is that like why you're so so focused on it? I mean, I don't know. The whole like Pete ruined gravel thing was always a tongue in cheek joke that some took seriously and most realized it was a joke. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, I don't know. I mean, I just I. Just I, I realized these races are enormous athletic feats. And when we came to Unbound in 2019, like, yeah, we were out for like what we thought was a group ride and you race at the end. And like it was everyone else throwing 
throwing it to us and we're like, okay, like this is a bike race, like gloves come off now, you know, like, yeah, and, yeah. and, and that's what happened. Like when you put a number on and you call it a race, like people want to try their hardest, you know, that's, mm -hmm. and that's the point of doing these things. Like there's no reason to pay all this money and all this time training to not give it your best. But I, my reason to coming for gravel was a rejection of the win at all costs monastic lifestyle that was road that was unfulfilling, right? Like it was about I get doing you. this, this shared experience. And so, yeah, like I want to have, I want to ride hard. I'm competitive, like, but I want to have a good time doing it you know, and, and kind of party along the way. Um, and that's just, that's just my way of doing it, I guess. Um, so yeah, like the whole, like winning all the gravel, that was, that was always a joke. And you know, if, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I, I like, but, but it's I also kinda... like doing it. I'm competitive, you know, and we're yeah, racing yeah. bikes, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I think, well, th well, that's kind of why I wanted to clear it, clear it up. Like, I think, mm. I think, I think it is kind of cool to put it out there and be like, yeah, I, like I'm going to go to the race to race. Like I'm going to go race my bike, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it at the expense of, of, uh, of ruining culture that was set before we got here. It's right. like, you know, and, and because it's interesting to kind of see some of the chase photo stuff go away. Like that yeah. was actually a very, that was a very interesting thing to me. And I don't know how you felt about it, but like, I honestly felt like I was missing out when I would see so when the they, photos on Instagram and stuff, you know? Yeah. You know, when they, and, when they announced the gravel hall of fame, I nominated the chase lounge. Wow. Like, Cause that should be in the freaking hall. That's they should actually kinda... find that lounge and they should put it in the building where the hall of fame is like but, retire it. Yeah. Cause they retired <laughs> yeah. it. I think it was salsa that sponsored it, right? They retired the chase lounge, but that was such a early part of this this whole gravel thing um it was like some of the first things that we saw as athletes that weren't involved in this culture that i at least for me like that's what drew me to that culture it was like yeah. you would see these fast guys and like you would hear about this guy winning and then you would see a photo of him stopped in the middle of the race on a couch and you're just i like, still remember that photo of like jeff kabush like all his mountain biker stuff and uh matt stevens with his like skin suit and tri bars right and they were yeah like on the chase lounge together just looking at each other like you know f you bro but it was like <laughs> they did that in the race because they were next to each other at that moment that was that's pretty badass man that's an image that still sticks in my mind that's cool no so. i and I, I think that's cool but anyways like i said i didn't want to keep you all night and and i got one more question for you so if you could have and i'm kind of interested to hear it man if you could have a cup of coffee or a beer with mm -hmm. one individual, you know, what beer, what coffee would you take? And, and who would that individual be dead or alive, man? And why? Oh, gosh, that's like that can go so far in so many ways. Yeah, man. Uh, there's no other requirements. You don't give me a prep like you couldn't have sent this to me in the email. Like, think about this final question. <laughs> nah, dude, you've been, on the, you've been on the podcast before and we asked it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> right. And and I think, and here's what I tell, here's what I tell people too. I mm. think if you ever get that opportunity, it's going to be on the fly, bro. You, there's no way whatever higher power or whatever you believe in or whoever gives you that opportunity is going to be like, okay, take your time, Pete. Like you're going to have to, you're going to have to come up quick, bro. Yeah, man. Oh gosh. I don't know. Uh, you know what? I'll, this will sound sappy, but it came in my mind. Um, That's okay. I would have. I would have a beer, a light beer, because he wouldn't drink the, the IPA stuff that I enjoy these days uh, with my dad before his brain injury. Wow. And catch up with him like on on that level, because that was one accident where light switch flipped and he is totally different now and com very, very disabled. And there is not a father son relationship. It's a caretaker relationship. Mm -hmm. So, um, to go back to, to my dad, you know, that would be, 
yeah and fill him in on on life now right yeah that would be pretty cool so no i think that's fucking sick dude that's yeah. kind of cool yeah yeah so well anyways pete thank you so much for coming on the podcast um hopefully my questions weren't annoying and too <laughs> philosophical and hopefully everybody can get stoked on it and know that Pete's not out there ruin gravel. I promise he's not. He's a good <laughs> dude, guys. Um, yeah, but anyway, yeah, yeah. You know, it's but just, anyway, sorry. Keep talking. No, you're you. good. You're good. No, I just, yeah, that, that was, you hit me with the hard questions this time, man, but that's, that's <laughs> kind of been this season as I think everyone has noticed and felt a significant, significant shift in, what gravel looks and feels like um and and i've had to do some soul searching but at the end of the day it's just it's kind of that that original rule of gravel is like you do you i'm gonna do me and like we're just gonna do that thing on our own way together i guess um you know what i actually do have one more question now and it brought okay. it up in that you know how we talked about oh yeah you know win-win culture good is there gonna ever be a point where it's just like Pete's just Pete's just lining up, like because he loves it that much? Pete's just, you know what I mean? Or is it is it gonna be hang the bike? Because I kind of felt like I kind of, and I don't know. Hopefully, he doesn't get mad about this, but I kind of think like Ted King's kind of doing like he just loves it, man. Mm -hmm. If he can make it happen that weekend, right. he's gonna go out and he's gonna race and he's gonna yeah. do the best that he can. But in reality, he's he's just towing the line to tow the line at this point. And, and he still pulls out crazy results and still can do crazy right. things. But is there ever going to be a Pete like that, you think? Yeah, you know, I think I love this space now more than I ever did in cycling uh, with anything else. And, you know, when I left the World Tour, I was like, gosh, I have like one more two-year cycle in me, like one more contract cycle, and I'm, I'm done. Um, but this thing is so goddamn fun all the time like i i could keep doing this till i'm 40 or 45 but just just keep reinventing myself in the way that i find pleasure in the bike because yeah right now i'm mid 30s i'm competitive and and i like going fast but that's the young kids are only getting faster man i feel it all yeah, the time yeah. and that I've still had a decent little season here, but uh, I know that doesn't last forever, but there's so many other things. There's so many other races to explore, regions to change, gravel's going more global, uh, cool content projects or whatever, because I do love bikes and and my dream is it just like you, right? Like you've got this media publication, you're prepping for some crazy adventures of yourself. And it's like, I just want to get paid to do bikes. Like I want my career to be bikes, whatever that yeah. means right now. That means racing. It means promoting this alternative path. But like, as long as I can keep doing that, man, and make my living, like I don't, I'm not going to go do something else. So, um, yeah, I think you're going to see me around these gravel races for better or worse for a while. Maybe not always at the pointy end, but <laughs> No, that's cool, man. And that, that's a that's a great way to end the podcast. Well, Pete, thank you so much. And guys, if you haven't already, please make sure you go check out Pete's social media down in the description below. We'll also put some of his sponsors down in the description below. Canyon. We'll put Big Tall Wayne down there. You can go bug that guy. You've probably already met him. The folk hero. You got you to yeah, get yeah. him on a podcast. I do. He I do. I do. Speaking, but you got to talk to him. That guy has some stories. So. Well, yeah. Convince him to talk to me. But other than that, guys, we'll see you next time. Cheers.